This man is all out action every time he's fought. I mean, when he fought Dan Hooker, beautiful finish in the first round. When he fought Charles Oliveira, what a back and forth fight that was. Then he fights Justin Gage in Madison Square Garden. Fight of the year. Woo! Turned Tony into a chicken nugget. Of course, we he just fought Dustin Poirier at Madison Square Garden as well. He's the man. He's exciting. He's awesome. And think about Michael Chandler. Dude said, I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. Who's had a better time than Mike? I mean, he's fought the best of the best on the biggest stages, and he has really rocked and put people on their feet. You're going to be hard-pressed to find a guy who's put in more work at a faster breakneck speed, faster breakneck pace than I have just in the last five fights, fighting the toughest guys possible. Yeah, yeah. The very first moment I had my, my meeting with Hunter, I shook his hand. I said, I want to be a good thing for your organization. I want to fight the toughest SOBs on the entire planet right mm -hmm. away. And mm -hmm. I've made good on that promise, and the UFC has made good on that promise. Life is good. My cup is full. He's fun. He's fun. He's a great kid. I like him a lot. And like I said earlier, he's like our Arturo Gotti, man. Kid comes and brings it every time and leaves everything in there. And he's so fun to watch. You know, I've been watching the guy fight for, for years. He's a former world champion. I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, you know, accomplished wrestler. He's done a lot of good stuff in his career. Very dangerous opponent. He's explosive. He's explosive. Co covers, he's a great athlete. Covers distance very well. You know, he's big and powerful. Everything yeah. he does is, he competes hard. Mm -hmm. Everything he does is 100%. I'm just going to call it right now. Michael Chandler's probably going to end up in the Hall of Fame one day simply because of the performances that he had. That fight with Justin Gagey this time last year, Madison Square Garden, just the same, but three rounds of back and forth. Absolute mayhem. I mean, this man is going to be one of your favorite fighters. I know he's one of mine. It's what this sport is, man. It was inspiring. You know, not, not often or ever does somebody get to beat me in the inspirational department in that, in that cage or in there. And Michael Chandler did that, and I'm so happy for him that he's getting the recognition for that. And yeah, just uh, his his ability, you know, which every is the ability that we all have to just make a choice. He made a choice that uh, you know he was not going to give in, give up, and you know that's it wasn't smart, man. His his body numerous times tried to give him the way out, you know, so that he didn't have to take the damage that he ultimately incurred. He's a fantastic fighter. I'll, I'm, I'll never, I will never say anything different. I just would like to see him fight smarter, utilize that wrestling, control the control his positioning. He trains with so many top guys at Kill Cliff, so okay. many scrambling with Usman, training with Gilbert Burns on the ground, jiu jitsu wise, stand up with all the other kickboxers that are out of that gym, you know. He's, he's got he's got a plethora of guys to train with that can mimic any style that he needs and he has all the ability to become a champ and he just can't seem to dig can't seem to find common sense between his ears when it comes to that that portion of the fight the fans and the onlookers of the sport think well that was a dumb decision why did he do that well dummy i didn't really actually cognitively sit down write out a pros and cons list of what i should do here and make a, a, a conscious decision i'm making a, a decision tied onto a tornado with a gun to my head <laughs> at, at every single moment right so um that's where you just look at it and just say gosh dude i can either be mad at you guys i could i could throw venom back at you i could insult you like you're insulting me or just say Gosh, what a beautiful freaking sport, man. What a beautiful sport. What a beautiful platform, especially UFC. He's just so enchanted with trying to uh, excite the fans that he just can't do anything else. And the thing is, you know, he wrestled D1. He knows what it means to take someone down and control him. But he gets in that cage, man, and he it's like he just becomes an entertainer. Um, yeah. And it, it, it's tough. but. He, he's a hilarious guy. He came out with that video. He had the ice on his face, the ice bag on his face, and he's talking to his kids, and he's yeah, explaining yeah, yeah. him. He's like, highly recommend you don't go into this line of work. My face has stitches and two black eyes and a lot of swelling. I would like to say I would not engage in a profession that your father has chosen, although it does provide a wonderful life for you. <laughs> He, so he, he's funny, man. I, it's hard not to like the guy. You, you got to love the him. Man. But he's the man. 
Everyone has a plan until they get hit. And he's very much like Mike Tyson. He's like, yeah, I have this. I'm going to wrestle him. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then as soon as he gets hit, ah, okay, let me just jump and lunge in and throw big shots. So I, all those things being said, I, I, I well, love watching him fight because of who he is. The way that I fight, yes, I get it's entertaining, but you can't just because it's entertaining, you can't negate the fact that it, that it is a a plausible game plan for for success in the sport of mixed martial arts. You got to realize that you're fighting another human being who has doubts, fears, insecurities, second guessing themselves and positions where they don't want to be in. And one of those positions is a guy breathing down their neck in their face with the foot on the gas and constantly putting pressure on them just like punches kicks knees elbows submissions and grappling are techniques in the sport of mixed arts so is pressure so is presence so is 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 pressing a guy and and playing to his spirit and trying to break his spirit i could see this internal battle going on in michael chandler i understand him more now before i never understood like i never seen it like really close i've been in the i've been in the arenas when he's fought i've been in the building before but never right there next to the cage he cannot help himself he wants to either be like the, the what's the battle here do you want to be an entertainer or do you want to win and he can't do both like he he just he can't so he's swinging for the fences and you you could you wish you could have seen his team begging him to stick to the game really? begging him to stick to the game yeah. plan. like he can't help himself it's just who he is Dana White called Michael Chandler the Arturo Gotti of the UFC. If you remember Gotti, Italian, tough guy, fun, exciting, world champion. But he never quite beat the elite of the elite. So the comparison is a bit fair in that regard because Chandler, while he was a Bellator champion, he didn't beat Gaethje, didn't beat Charles, didn't beat Dustin, even though the fights were fun. I think that's fair enough. Like I, I like uh, Chandler. You know, he's a exciting guy, and yeah, he does have that wrestling uh, factor and things like that. But you know, man. like uh, obviously, uh, you've got guys that have had shots at the titles and were pretty unsuccessful. Uh, so, like you know, it's time for time for new blood, anyway. But again, they're they're exciting, and you know, I'm sure if they uh, keep winning and, and things like that, like they're going to be right there again. Chandler throws hooks, mm -hmm. but he throws bombs. He throws some good straight punches. When he throws straight punches, he lands more. But when he throws those hooks, he's he's open mm -hmm. for that fucking sweet left hand Which of Sean McGregor. McGregor. <laughs> um, so that would be interesting fight. What is bigger than fighting Conor McGregor? And at this point, him coming back, what is bigger than Conor McGregor stepping into the octagon with got to be the most electrifying guy in the UFC right now. Yeah. I hate I it feels hard for me to say that, but I think it's the truth. This tells me that Mike's focus has shifted a bit. It feels like now the title isn't at the forefront for Michael Chandler because the guys that he's calling aren't in championship contention. You tell me who the BMF is, you tell me who the fans if we did a poll right now, who who's the baddest mother fudger in the UFC? <laughs> Uh, I think uh, I think uh, I I got a couple of awards on my on my mantle right now, but that BMF belt sure would look good next to him. Michael Chandler is like a quitter, man. That, that's like the first thing to be in the BMF. I saw when he fought my boy Will Brooks. Will Brooks hit him so hard, this guy just quit. He just quit in the middle of the thing. He, he turned his back, shook his head. He said, "No, no, I'm done fighting." So BMF, my like that, that's the first rule of being a BMF in anything. Like you can't be a quitter. You might lose here and there, but you can't ever give up on yourself. You can't quit. So that conversation of BMF belt is it's like not happening. Come on. You know, if, if I if he comes up to the weight class and I hit him with a jab and he turns into dust, he disintegrates, right? Like one of them old statues that disintegrates into dust. Me killing this guy doesn't do anything really for my career. But dad gum, tell me that tell me that wouldn't that wouldn't get the, the juices flowing of the entire mixed martial arts world. Michael Chandler versus George Masvidal for the BMF belt. The Rock walking in with it over his shoulder.